morning, y'all. Um, I'm not, not necessarily balanced, but it's a today thing and then a 2015 thing, this, this message. But the today thing was, and it was recently, about use what you got. But the theme started in 2015 for me. It's out of 2 Kings 2, 19 through 22. Just one piece of it. But also the story of Jesus and the loaves, the fishes and the loaves. And I'm going to kind of paraphrase a little bit, but you all know the story. Um, sorry, I didn't look up the scriptures. <laughs> Everybody was kind of panicking a little bit. He was like, what do we do with all these people? You know, we can't send them home hungry. They'll faint in the land. Jesus said, you know, what do we got? You know, the disciples are like, well, we, you know, we can't go get by land. We can't go buy anything. We're too far. We have too many people. And, you know, all the reasons why they couldn't, kind of. It's like, okay, well, what, you know, what, what is there? Seemingly nothing. A little bit of fish, a little, a little bit of loaves of bread. Compared to the multitudes that were there. And the, what was needed and the task at hand and all the other stuff. It's like, but what did he do? He knew the Father. Blessed it. And it multiplied. That's a really cool miracle, guys. We all know it and have heard it. I wanted to do some of those things in our lives today. <clears throat> Man, I can tell you, me personally, and I will get to them soon. I don't even like to call them miracles anymore. It's just the hand of God, but a hundred things he's done without jobs. <clears throat> My wife lost her job and three quarters or more of our income was wiped out. And we're more blessed. And this was in January or Christmas, right at Christmas. Anyhow, a few days before Christmas, actually. Well, stuff went on with that. But the blessing of just taking care of us and telling us what to do and just different things that have transpired from it, from the obedience of it, because we used what we had. We were just recently able to really, really bless some ministries. And there's one, I'm going to kind of put a plug in for my guess. Um, Noble Life, it's on Facebook. Look me up, look them up, Aaron Buttrick, look them up. Please, he's just using what he got. I don't even think, he's just doing it. I don't even think he's getting paid, honestly. I, I, he doesn't have a job, a lot of it. He, just recently, calculated out, because he's, he's just a numbers guy and he's very smart at this. And he has to too, because you have to, you know, the food that he gives out has to be weighed and, you know, people get, he has tax write-offs and stuff. So, there's, you know, some stuff in there that's, you know, I don't know anything about that, but he has to keep up with that. $500,000 since all this coronavirus mess started. $50,000 the other day in one day of food that he's passed out. That's what I'm saying, guys. We're all kind of right now twisted off into this, you know, it's a virus, a bug. Yes, I get it. It's deadly. Yes, I get all that. It's not good. But what do we got? Who's our source? What are we listening to? The media or the Holy Ghost? God or this twisted up mess? 
It's just one of the twisted up messes, though, guys, because the enemy, uh, that's, this is how I always know that I'm on the right track with God or in the right place and getting there somewhere. When I start seeing the enemy because coming up, cropping up all over the place because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. I get all the health concerns and all that. Nobody wants to perish from a disease. I get all that. If you knew the health things, some pretty, very serious, even deadly in my life, the swamps I've had to go through to get here, literally a walking miracle. Honestly, one day I'll share that with you more than one time. Many, even just recently, even what he's got me involved in and doing right now. Shouldn't be, but this is handiwork and it's a purpose and I'm on the wheel and I'm learning to trust in him even more. I already, I already had a lot of trust, faith. It was already there. It's just been enhanced. So what do you got? Is it prophecy? Is it prayer? You know, this is not a very great thing, but it is, but it isn't. But the finances, what what is it? Time, availability, what do you got? What are you doing with what you got? What God's given you? We can't discount the manna from heaven, guys. That's what that bread was with the five loaves or how many of our loaves and fishes. I get that story mixed up five and two. I just get that mixed up. I'm sorry, okay? Apologize for that. That's not totally correct. But what are we doing with it? The talents. Some buried them. Some took them to the marketplace. Well done, faithful servant. What are we doing with what, what God's giving us? I'm going to go back to 2015, okay, and to the, to the Elijah scriptures. And then I'm going to end with that. Because I've got some other messages and I don't want to intertwine them yet. I'm going to put some out more out today, probably. 2015. I've actually got two out now, and another one's coming back out that had been out since last year of March. It's a long story, but I'm just redoing it now, and it's about to come out this week. But it had already been out a year, but it's called Jesus Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. But the first one that he had me write was Visions and Writings of Promise, Hope, and a Future for America. You can still get that on Amazon. The other one's long story but I've had to redo some stuff to comply with some Amazon things that one's coming out this week you can just email me at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com and you know or, or go just go to Amazon and find them but I was writing this book 2015 the Lord gave it to me I had a bunch of them guys a lot of visions, a lot of dreams now. So I started writing them down. So I was like, man, this is sloppy. I can't read my second grade English. Honestly, I mean, I was really trying, guys. Honestly, my heart was in it, but it's just like, what do I do, guys? So I put it on my computer. Well, the computer's, you know, 2015, by the computer I bought in 2008. It's already pretty old. Well, battery didn't work I should have just got one but it was just it was just old so when I sit at my desk I trip over the cord sometime for getting up and I'd fall out and because the battery was dead it would just everything I was working on would be toast so I wasn't really careful and had stuff backed up so anyhow I was aggravated about that that was one part of it that I'm getting somewhere with this
Lauren was like, well, just use what you got. I'm like, okay, God. So I was. And then started this book. And then I got the book wrote. And then sitting down at the computer one day. And he told me to start, put, start doing YouTube. Man, God, I, you know, I'm lost as a goose in high grass and all this technological stuff. Do you know you're really talking to? It's like, man, Lord. It's not that hard, but to me it was. Now it's not, but that bad, anyhow. But I'm st so I had a friend, and he's kind of hard to get a hold of, and he's a really good Good guy, and he's, but he's, you know, really smart in the computer realm, but he's really hard to get hold of or to kind of connect. It's because he's so busy. It's just... And I finally get a hold of him, gave him a hundred bucks, got a program that I had heard about and wanted to do, um, so that you didn't just see my mug on this. It had all, you know, all the stuff that people do on YouTube, and um, Snag It, I think, was it, but so... So you can see all the cool stuff. Well, I don't, as you can see, I don't use it today, but. So we get the program set up in my computer. Spent pretty much the whole day doing it. A lot, lot of time. Just because my computer is old. I'm slow. I don't know how to do all this stuff. I just had to, you know. I have to have the same thing four times. Anyhow. Get it, get home. Next day, I'm going to do the YouTube, sit down on my computer, about 45 minutes into it, the program wouldn't open up. I'm getting frustrated, shouldn't, but was, like, Lord, you told me to do this. I was pretty excited at first, because that was something God was directing me to do. I was, you know, you can use what I got, and it wouldn't work. None of it would work. This is how the Second Kings came about. And it just wouldn't work. About 45 minutes into it, I'm literally, not in real loud, but still, I'm yelling at my computer. My wife, I'm in the back here in the office. My wife's in the front. She's like, honey, what's wrong? This stupid computer. Well, really, I was about ready to just chunk it out the window. Honestly, that's how frustrated I was. I was like, just throw it away. Start over. Buy another one, whatever, you know. I mean, I was really getting aggravated. Kind of like we all are with this coronavirus, whether wherever you're at on it, okay? Everybody's mad and aggravated about something with it. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, my wife is like very, very hot-natured, so... Our air is 60, and it's hot in Texas, and it literally doesn't shut off for months, literally, 24-7. It's running, literally. So that's why I have flat, flannel pajamas on. I'm in Texas, and I have a bathrobe on. You have to sleep like that, blankets and all. So, so the Lord said, get up, go get your pajamas on, get ready for bed. And in the morning time, I'm going to fix it with one click of the mouse. Man, my faith level was negative 10,000, you know? I didn't have any in that area. Yeah, right, God. You're really going to do this. So, hold on a second. Sorry, my dog's trying to come in and sorry about that. So, but my obedience, I learned that a long time ago. Just use what I got. Okay, God, I'll, go, I'll do what you tell me. I go to bed, get up the next morning, not even thinking about it, get my cup of coffee, pray, do my thing. And then I was like, I wonder if the computer program works. Let me go try it. I sit down. There was a small detail that I didn't wasn't paying attention to, but when I was going through it, there was a little box I had to check. 
check the box, one click of the mouse, and the computer opened up, and the program was there. And then this is what the Lord's doing with me in these dreams and stuff. They're very, very, very specific. I'm going to share two of them with you. But he said, go to 2 Kings 2, 19. Very specific, guys. Uh, you know. Okay, God. So I read it. The story is about Elijah and he's at Jericho and a guy comes out and the city's pleasant, but the water's killing people. I'm going to paraphrase it, but read it. 2 Kings 2, 19 through 22. He tells his servants, go get a bowl and some salt. Puts the salt in the bowl. Dumps it in the water and drink it to this day. It's potable water. Clean. But it was killing people before. The Lord said he used what he had. So that's my message, guys. What do you got? What are you using? What are you doing with it? Are you using what you got? So, I'm going to end with that piece because there's way more to it. <coughs> but, <coughs> The specifics that the scriptures God gives me, this is the message that I got on there, and just read it. Um, it's it's on there. I had a dream one night, and in a dream, the Lord spoke to me, and He said, "Colossians three sixteen was just as important as John three sixteen." I woke up in kind of a cold sweat, almost. God, I was like, "Man, God, that's a very important scripture." John three sixteen. I don't even know what Colossians three sixteen said. Very specific. Read it. It's about how we treat each other as the body. But read all of three. It's all good. Read past 316 all the way down to. But then within a couple days, the Lord said, pick a book. What? Look up 316, pick a book. Very specific again. But that was in prayer. The dream was not. I was asleep. The prayer, the prayer was. So I picked up a book and started looking. Look, look them up, guys. I got a list if you want to see them, too. But not all of them, but the vast majority of them. But Matthew 3.16 is about Jesus being baptized and the Holy Spirit resting upon him. Revelation, which not a lot of people like and want to hear. I'd rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm because I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Very specific, you know, I had to read the whole revelation to get, it's one scripture, and it's cut and dry, beginning and ending. They're all like that, Malachi. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego go, King, we don't owe you an explanation, we know he's able. <clears throat> there's just some, John, there's some, First Peter, they're, just read them, guys, they're really good scriptures. And I'm not, I don't like, I don't mind, I'm, I don't like that number thing because it's kind of like maybe even feels new agey and it's like all that weird stuff I'm not into weird but there it was there's some other things that have been very specific on scripture but that's where I'm at right now today in the dreams and the visions that I'm having mostly dreams again but some visions but it's very very specific my last one was and I'm going to end with this because it's getting too long. About the famine in the land. And he said, it was in a dream, and he said, go to Amos 8.11. Read it, guys, about the storm that's coming to America from 8.11 to 9.11, 2020. And then I started correlating it together. At first, I didn't. I just put that out there, and I was like, and then I thought about it. I was like, and that's the date that this is starting. So you think we're in some storms now? Man. Lord help us. We need to repent, but that's but use what you got. That's we'll go back to that because I want to stay in that theme. Use what you got. What do you have? And you're gonna get it more of it and more direction the 
because this was the other thing that the Lord gave me. The 5 a.m. prayer. He said, tell the nation to get together at 5 a.m. and pray. No distractions if you don't want them. You don't have a cell phone if you don't want it. You don't have to pick up your YouTube, your internet, your computer. You don't have to turn on CNN. You can have everything off. People are asleep. Cars aren't out that much. You might not be at work till 7. You've got plenty of time to pray. This is what he wants, guys. Our ears to hear what the Spirit's saying to the church. To enter into our heart. Come on, guys. Let's just Rubber meets the road. Let's just be real. Look around. Are we not in a mess? Pick one of them. You know exactly what I'm talking about, guys. So, use what you got. And one of the pieces, the big piece right now, is that 5 a.m. prayer. And you may not be able to do it. Everybody can't. As often as you can, but it's... The point is the non-distractiveness of it and turning everything off and turning to Him. So your source becomes God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And you get divine direction because it's available to all of us. And He wants us to use it. So see it at 5 a.m. And if we do it as a nation collectively and as a people, we want to turn this country around. We want to turn the world around. We want to be the light of the world. Get up with me. Five in the morning. I'm not up every morning. Some mornings I just have to sleep. I'm exhausted. Sometimes I'm up at 12. I don't know. You know, it's just whatever the Lord does. I... <laughs> but the importance of it is the collectivity of it, of the body. Getting together in the prayer. <laughs> Love you guys. So use what you got. What do you got? What talents have he given you? giftings, callings, <clears throat> Joel's army. Love you guys.